wrote down some things I saw in here. Uh, deception, people being deceived. I saw persecution, tribulation. I saw imposters. I saw judgment. But above all, I saw a reminder that the Lord is coming. And uh, that'll lift you up. You can, uh, you can handle the things in life if, uh, uh, if you just look to the Lord and uh, uh, have him to uh, lead you and to encourage you. And uh, it, it is a beautiful thing. Uh, uh, I'm glad he included that in there about the Lord is coming. And uh, we just need to be ready for him. We got one illustration in here that I'll be uh, I'll get to it there and be sharing, but I saw something this week that encouraged me and had to do with a man that was in charge of an estate. And he had visitors come and he said, oh, what a beautiful place. He said, uh, where's the owner at? And he said, well, he, he's coming someday, you know. He said, but you have cleaned this place up. I mean, made it so beautiful and manicured everything. It's just, it's just like you were expecting him to come tomorrow. He said, oh, no, no. I'm expecting him to come today. And we as Christians, uh, we need to, uh, through the things in this chapter here, we need to be people that are expecting the Lord today, be ready for him today. I'd hate to think that many people missed out on heaven waiting until tomorrow. Um, what I saw in this study here is that uh, made me think about all of the things that are doomed. I guess you could uh, make a list of things in your life and things that uh, regardless of how much time and effort you put in, those things are doomed. But then there are those things that's not doomed. Those things that are the heavenly treasures that we come about in life. And uh, might make you a list out. Where's your focus at? What's, what's going to be the outcome of those things that you're maybe putting your trust in or protection in or whatever? But uh, I don't like that word doomed, but it, it's a real one there. Uh, as we start chapter uh, 13 uh, they, when you're looking at this you think boy I wish they had included uh, you know about the uh, poor widow there that was right before that uh, if you turn with me uh, to uh, Mark chapter 12 and verse 44 uh, what's being talked about here is the poor widow that uh, came into the temple and uh, into the treasury, uh, she put forth an offering there. And verse 44 says, For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. What I see there is someone totally dedicated to the Lord, a commitment there. She's got her focused on those things, uh, not the things that are doomed, but those treasures. And uh, that testimony right there is still real today. People can read that and just see the complete dependence on God. And uh, that's what we need to be able to handle chapter 13. We really need that. And uh, we had one more thing I want to turn to before I get started here in that. And that's over in Psalms. In verse 32, see chapter 32, and uh, verse 7. Psalms 32 and 7 says, Thou art my hiding place, thou shalt preserve me from trouble, thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Selah. You see someone here, uh, the psalmist talking about someone hiding. You play hide and go seek, you know, and you don't want people to find you and stuff. But this person hiding, they've got songs of deliverance. They got that song upon their heart there. 
knowing that they're going to be delivered. And uh, that's what we need to be able to understand and face these things here that are in uh, chapter 13. Uh, look with me in uh, chapter 13 of Mark. Let's look at verse 1 and 2 here. It says, And as he went out of the temple, one of the disciples said unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. He said that with excitement. He says, Look here. Look at this magnificent uh, temple here. And look what it says in verse 2. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. I can imagine uh, these guys here uh, got uh, Peter and James and John and Andrew. I believe they got together and they said, wow, this looks indestructible, you know. You've seen the Mankind likes to build things that will last forever, you know. And uh, you can read and things and research people have done and studied. And uh, uh, those stones there must have been a minimum of 10 to 12 feet and great width on them. And that's just the things they could see. You can imagine the foundation of those stones and how big and large they would be. And uh, they get there and they go, wow, how's this going to happen? I see these guys uh, talking it over, you know, and wondering, and uh, uh, they wanted to ask the Lord questions here. And uh, through this questions, uh, uh, through the Lord's answer here, uh, we got the Ovalet uh, Discourse here to where it covers uh, things uh, that's going to happen soon, and it covers things in the distance. And uh, what our challenge is to figure out, well, uh, distinguish between the two, which one is happening soon and which ones are happening uh, later on here. And uh, as we study this, we can look at some of the things the Lord said there about it. But uh, I've had to think a little bit about prophecy and uh, uh, what prophecy means and saw a statement that prophecy forecasts history, okay? Prophecy saying that these are things that's gonna come about. It says history confirms prophecy, okay? You say, I've heard about this and heard about this, when's it gonna happen, you know? If it ain't happened yet, you know, when the Lord says it's gonna happen, it is going to happen. And history is going to be the proof of that. Okay? I say, why well, you been talking all the time about the Lord coming back? One day he's coming. History's going to record it here, okay? And it'll be real to you, and you'll understand that. But prophecy forecasts those things. History confirms that prophecy that takes place. And uh, we don't, a lot of times, fully understand uh, uh, that prophecy and things until uh, it's fulfilled. But believe me, uh, the Lord is going to fulfill everything. I wish I could see the red a little bit better than I do. It's so, so important here. In verse 3, it says, And he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple. Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, okay, Verse 4, he says, tell us then, uh, when shall these things be, and what shall the sign when all of these things shall be fulfilled? So they're wanting a couple of things there. They want to know when these things are taking place, and what kind of signs are we going to have, okay? And... Uh, what he's talking about here is, uh, and a lot of this chapter has to do with the uh, uh, destruction of Jerusalem. It's also got to do with the coming of the Lord. And uh, they're wanting to know these things here. And then you can see the rest of this chapter is in red as the Lord begins to share with them. And 
uh, in answering their questions. Uh, I don't believe they wanted to hear what they heard. But the Lord don't hold back. He shares those things that are going to take place here. Let's look at verse 5. And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed lest any man deceive you. He's starting off with caution to people. Uh, you don't want to be deceived. And to not be deceived, we need to know the word of God and to capture that. He says in verse 6, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. And when you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be you not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. Uh, how many times, I'm guilty of this too, you hear these things of earthquakes and wars and things, and you say, oh, the Lord's coming back. Well, yeah, he is. But as he puts it here pretty clearly, uh, the end is not yet. There's other things that need to take place here. And uh, this world is in this shape now with this, but in verse 8, For nations shall rise up against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in diverse places, and there shall be famines and trouble. Look at that next part. These are the beginnings of sorrows. So many things. That's why I read those verses earlier there to encourage us. Uh, uh, in verse 5 through 13, he's talking about difficult days coming. And uh, go through a lot on this earth here. And uh, uh, there's a thing called judgment that the Lord needs to carry out. Uh, that's just, uh, uh, I think we can understand in today's lesson why the things happened in Jerusalem the way they did here. But uh, let's read on here a little bit more. But the beginnings of sorrows. Verse 9, but take heed, here's that word heed again, to yourselves, for they shall deliver you to councils and in the synagogues, and you shall be beaten, and you shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. You know, when I read these things, I think, you know, he's talking maybe to his disciples and sharing with them. But there's nothing in the Word of God that we can't uh, benefit from in realizing uh, the words heed. Uh, we need to take heed every day in our walk with the Lord and focus on the things that, uh, uh, that's happening around us and uh, praying for them and seeing what the Lord would have us to do and to... Uh, to say, but uh, it's, it's a testimony against them here. But we see uh, great persecution here that's uh, taking place here, and uh, uh, men of God, you know, being persecuted and killed, and uh, uh, it's just a sad thing here. Verse 10 says, And the gospel must first be published among all nations. How important that that is. That's part of the uh, plan of God there. And that they need to, not that everybody's going to get saved, but they need to know about the Word of God. And uh, it's great to have our youth going and uh, capturing these ideas. And they can make a big difference in the church and then uh, around. Uh, and, and when they come in contact with what they see and uh, the experiences they gain. Verse 11, but when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what you shall speak, neither do you premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given in that hour, that speak ye. For it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. Isn't that great how the... the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost is going to help us and touch us. Uh, uh, I'm just reminded that any time we witness to someone, the Lord's going to give us things to say. Uh, he wants to see people saved and uh, hear people being uh, drug out and treated a certain way, but uh, he's saying the, uh, the Holy Spirit's going to be there to help and to encourage. And uh, 
the help is there at all times there. But look at the level of persecution. Uh, it said the beginning of sorrows. Uh, this is heartbreaking here of how bad that it gets in verse uh, 12. It says, now the brother shall betray the brother to death. The father, thy son, and children shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. The level of persecution goes all the way to death there. No devil doesn't like a good family and stuff here, and no doubt wants to use them to harm each other. To uh, I don't know about you, but uh, uh, I've got uh, young, two youngsters that really discourage me. Just why? Why can't they capture the love of God? You know, and fall in love with Him, and uh, uh, many of us are that way, no doubt here, and. Uh, that's just a different level of persecution when uh, uh, your family's not standing with you and walking with you. In verse 13, And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. Uh, there's an enduring thing to walk with the Lord. And uh, uh, no doubt... Uh, different levels of being saved here and thinking about uh, whether it's being saved from the destruction of the world, not having that hiding place to go to, not having that song of deliverance in your heart and stuff. But uh, there's a lot going on here about the persecution and things here that take place. And uh, we see here, uh, starting with verse uh, 14 here, uh, it's called an abomination of desolation. Uh, this is really uh, hard to read here about what takes place during this time. And, uh, uh, you know, as you read these things here, I had to look up a couple of other things here about uh, trying to understand. Uh, you know, we was talking about how things happen uh, in the immediate future and then things will happen in a distant time and uh, uh, different people study the word of God and uh, they'll come up with uh, what each verse means or uh, the overall view of it and uh, we've got two uh, significant views one of them is the pre-millennial view uh, the pre and millennial millennial means a thousand years the pre means before Okay, so what they're saying, and uh, I think the uh, overall thing of Free Will Baptist is a pre-millennial view, and they, they're thinking that there will be a 1,000-year reign of Christ upon the earth, and he will come before the 1,000-year reign. And uh, that's something beautiful to see there, that all this stuff going on here that will be taking place and know that the Lord will be coming and there will be a, a change there and he'll rule for a thousand years before the old devil gets turned loose there. And then there's a all-millennial view. The A ah, or the A on there means no. They do not believe in the 1,000-year uh, uh, reign of Christ on the earth. And... Uh, as you look at this, uh, uh, you can see some uh, things that, uh, you know, it'd be great if we understood everything in this chapter. But uh, I'll admit to you this morning, I don't understand it all. But I knew, do know the Lord is coming. And it's so important that we study his word to uh, glean from it there. But in verse 14 through 23, we see the great uh, tribulation here and a time here and uh, let's just look at it here starting at verse 14 and when you shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing where it ought not it says let him that readeth understand then let them that be in Judah flee to the mountains 
Look how bad it gets in verse 15. And let him that is on the housetop not go down into the house, neither enter therein to take anything out of the house. And let him that is in the field not turn back again for to take up his garment. But woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days and pray that your flight will be not in the winter. For in those days shall affliction such as was not known since the beginning of the creation which God's created unto this time neither shall be. It says, And except that the Lord shall have shortened those days, no flesh should be saved, but for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. I'm going down to 23. He says, And then if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is the Christ, or lo, he is there, believe him not. For false Christ and false prophets shall rise and shall shew sights and wonders to seduce it, if it were possible, even the elect. But again, he says, but take heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. We see some uh, great destruction taking place here, and uh, uh, most of the views is that it is uh, where those stones were up on top of one another, and now there's they're coming down, and, and, and uh, there's judgment taking place here. Uh, do you ever think about why God, uh, our loving God, has that judgment pronounced upon people? You know, we've studied some things through this uh, about how he treat that, how the Jews treated uh, uh, the men of God, uh, how they treated them and killed them, and uh, uh, how they uh, altered his word. Uh, and then the final thing was when they rejected the son. If you reject the son, there's trouble coming. There's judgment coming. And it's, uh, it's something that, uh, I don't know, you can look at this and study it and things. I'll tell you what I got out of it. Uh, we need to make sure of a genuine repentance. Okay? We need to have a certainty because there's a judgment coming. And they rejected God's messengers and uh, tampered with his message, rejected his son, and then doom took place. And it, it's scary to read the details there about what uh, took place. And... Uh, I've read, uh, I don't know, uh, I don't say anything that ain't correct, but uh, a million people killed at that time in a short period of time, mass destruction and things that took place. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's something to read and study, but when it comes down to me and you, uh, we need genuine repentance. Uh, I made up my mind that when I got saved, I didn't want no shortcuts to heaven, okay? There's some doctrine and things that says, you know, and it's just like, uh, I don't know. Uh, he's telling us to do things here. And a little bit later on, he'll, he'll mention some other things we're doing while we're waiting on him to come. We need to be a people that will be excited about the Lord and live for him. And uh, even says, uh, look at yourself, see where you're at. And how important it is that we are putting our time on uh, investing in the Lord. My mind sort of wanders a little bit when I studied about those big stones and things there. And uh, I've been in uh, places before in downtown cities and have these tall buildings and stuff. And I thought, boy, I don't think the wind's going to blow these things down. They're going to be here forever, you know. But when I study this and see the destruction that can take place here, I thought about uh, our structures, even in our homes, uh, used to be uh, uh, this redwood would work fine on a deck, you know. And we figure, well, that don't last too long. 
I'll get that composite stuff, you know, something that'll last 50 years or more, you know. Um, so we want things that are sturdy, things that'll last. Nothing's going to last longer than loving the Lord and trusting in Him. I sort of visualize something here about uh, if we're building a fort fortress around our house, uh, what if we had enough money just to build it out of money? Maybe big old $20 bills or $100 bills, you're building a fancy fortress around your house, you know, stockpiling up money. It's doom. <laughs> Any kind of investment we make, not leaning toward the Lord is uh, to be doomed there. Let's look at verse 24. But in those days after that tribulation, listen to this now, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers that uh, are in heaven will be shaken. We see some signs in the heaven here, and uh, that's a sign for us about, uh, you know, the Lord coming back. Uh, sometimes you read this and you think, boy, he's, he come back that day. No, he's not. Our history hasn't shown that yet, so this will be fulfilled one day. And he says uh, in verse 26, And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then, verse 27, and then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Well, that one day that this is going to take place, it's going to be sudden. It's going to be visible. It's going to be a reward to those that are trusting in him. And he is coming. He is coming. Let's look at verse 28. He uses the Lord loves power parables here and uh, this little things to open the mind up. I give an illustration here. He says in verse 28, and learn a parable of the fig tree. When her branch is yet tender, and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is near. So ye, in like manner, when ye shall see these things come to pass, know that it is nigh, even at the door. That really gets to me right there. You know, we need to, told that earlier about the, the fellow there said, oh, today, well, the Lord's at your door. You need to be ready, don't you? But he's saying that there's going to be signs. There's going to be signs. And boy, we get a lot of signs. But he said that uh, it could be as like it, that's at your door. So we need to be people that be ready for him there. And verse 30 says, Verily I say unto you that this generation shall not pass away till all these things be done. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. If you want to invest in anything, uh, invest in God's words. It's not going to pass away. It's going to be there to encourage us, put that song in our heart, put that hope in our heart. And uh, it's very special when, when you find in the Word of God and uh, uh, there's great encouragement. Uh, you know, we, we learn things as we go along. Sometimes, uh, I know one thing that I reminded of as I read this was that... Uh, Gaylene was going through a very difficult time with, the, uh, you know, the cancer taking place and things. She kept saying, God's got this. God's got this. And I, I thought, well, she feels like she's going to be healed. And, uh, of course, she went on to be with the Lord. But I can visualize getting to heaven one of these days and see her smile and she say, God had this. You know, you're going to see things up there and wonders and 
It talks here about uh, cutting short the suffering and things. How many people do we lose when we get mad at God for him taking them and he's saving them from so much more pain that they would have? It's, it's something beautiful to think on how God does things and we look through that glass darkly at it there, but uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing when we study his word. And then 32, he reminds us, but of that day and that hour knoweth no man, know not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. That's something to think about there, that uh, Jesus and his earthly uh, features there, he had no idea when that was going to take place. When the Lord's coming again, not the angels, not him, no one but the Father. And again, in verse 33, he tells us, Take ye heed, watch and pray, for you know not when the time is. For when the Son of Man is as a man walk, for the Son of Man is as a man walking in a far journey, who left his house, and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. I like that part there. I guess I just never read it that way before, but uh, while he's gone, while the Lord's gone on his journey, he's coming again to every man his work. He's given each one of us a job to do while he's gone, and uh, we'll give an account for that. In verse 35, Watch ye therefore, for you know not when the master of the house cometh, at eve, at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning, lest come suddenly he find you sleeping. And what shall I say unto you, I say unto all, he closes out this chapter, watch. Tells us a lot of things here in this chapter, and uh, like I say, there's a, a, there's a depth to this that uh, would take quite a bit of study there to understand it and uh, to glean the knowledge from it. But if you could just realize uh, uh, that judgment that's coming, uh, that uh, uh, the hope that we have, though, is coming, we just need to be watchful for that. Um, it's beautiful uh, in the Word of God to be able to see uh, the conclusion of things that take place. I just about went to the end of it first and worked my way back because it was getting pretty heavy in studying that. So I've got the conclusion here that the study guide said. This chapter clarifies several important issues. First, it makes clear that the present world we live in is full of trouble and uncertainty. Christians are not immune from it and may even be the subject of great persecution at times. It is not going to get any better till Jesus comes. Second, it points out the certainty and the severity of God's judgment. God is rich in mercy but his patience is limited. Third, it declares Jesus is coming back. Stay alert and in prayer. That means being able to respond as John did to Christ's statement of surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. How many times do we ask the Lord to come on back? We're ready for him to come right now. It'd be great. Uh, we need to be expecting him. You know, all of those things that happened in Jerusalem there, you can read in the Bible where he cried over Jerusalem, shed those tears over Jerusalem. And I think uh, any of us here that don't repent and come close to him, he'll shed tears for us. We, he can see the beauty of what can be in our lives. Uh, I encourage you to continue the study in this great, great book here. And uh, uh, this chapter has uh, got a lot of value in it here. A lot of, we need to be warned. It gives the warning and it gives the encouragement. 
gives us hope. Let's go to the Lord in prayer today. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you, dear Lord, uh, for the challenges that we see in your word. Thank you for the hope that we have. Uh, help us each and every one to take heed and just, Lord, be ready for your coming. That means be prepared, dear Lord. And that means coming to you and confessing our sins and trusting in you and uh, leaning on that hope that we can have as children of God. Thank you, dear Lord, for loving us and caring for us and blessing us and giving us this wonderful church family. May uh, each one of us be encouraged to study our, our Sunday school lesson, dear Lord, and to learn together, dear Lord, and that we can encourage others because people do need encouragement, Lord. Thank you for touching our hearts, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all.